Hello there, in this video I'm going to talk about how you can construct your own strands using this node here called Construct Strands. And um, before I actually use this node, I want to look at an example that already exists. So let's set a watch point here on this strand object. And what we can see is we have point position and strand offset property. And these are the two core properties that we have to understand. And so I've printed the data here to the viewport. So we have a point position array and we have a strand offset array. And the point position should be pretty straightforward. It's a bunch of vectors that are ordered in a certain way. The order is going to matter because it's going to work in tandem with the offset array. And what this is, is basically a collection of indices that refer back to the indices here in the point position array. So each element, with the exception of the last one, is simply the starting point for a given strand. So the second strand here starts at index 5. Uh, index 5 is this, so it would be this point position representing this point here. Well, let's walk through this. So basically, by defining a starting position, we're also implicitly defining an end position. And so the first strand will go from 0 to 4, simply one less than the next one. And that'll be these indices here, and therefore these vectors, or point positions. And that'll result in this strand here. And then we just keep going, 5 to 7. That's that. And finally, 8 to 11. That would be these four vectors resulting in the strand here. And that's really all there is to it. As soon as you understand this, you're good to go. You're good to create your own strands. And um, the way I've done this in this case is a very manual approach, which, you know, is fine for this example, but if you want to build thousands of strands, this may not be the feasible solution. But basically, I've just simply created a sequence array for each individual strand and uh, combined them into one single array. That's my point positions. And then I also have a string to array node. I just punched in the numbers. Uh, and that's it. That's my offset array. So now I want to look at an example that's maybe a little more flexible and procedural. So let's first create a sphere. And I want this to be a little more low res for now. Something like this. And the first thing I want to do is I want to see the point indices here for each point displayed there. So I'm going to use print points from the print pack. Get point position. And then get array indices. There we go. And I'll make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so what I want to achieve is I want to create strands from the North Pole to the South Pole along these vertical edges. So like this. And then this one would be going like this, like that, and so on, all the way around. And so the first thing I need to do is create my point position array. 
Now you might be saying we already have the point positions here because they're just based on the sphere, which is true, but we can see here that they're not really ordered in the way that I need them because they're ordered along the horizontal edges. So I want to first come up with a way to create an array with the indices um, ordered in a way that'll make sense so I can later get my point positions based on those indices. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sequence array that replicates this first strand here, starting at index zero. And I'm going to ignore the poles for now. And uh, I can see here that this is simply increments of eight. Uh, so first of all, let me create value nodes here. So the size is going to be six or this, whatever this is, and then the step size will be eight. And if I print that, uh, make this a bit smaller. So this is my array for the first strand, excluding the poles. So now what I want to do is I want to just replicate this as many times as I've got strands. And I can see here that the next strand is still going to be increments of eight, but it's um, just one more for each individual value. And that just keeps going as we go around the sphere. So I'm going to use a for each loop. Plug that in here. I want to run that many times because that's the number of strands I need and uh, in here I simply want to add the current index to each element in the array I'll put that and I want to print this and I will have to make sure I'll flatten the array There we go. These are all my indices now ordered and I can make my life a little easier by displaying it like this. So this one now represent one strand each. It looks pretty good, but we have to take these poles into consideration. And what I can see is, or what I'm going to assume, is that this number here, 48 and 49, is somewhat related to the total point count. So if I use get point count, see what that value is. You can see it's 50. So I'm going to say, okay, this north pole is simply the point count minus 2. And the south pole is the point count minus one. So let's try that. Decrement by two, this value, and then by one. And I'll plug these in here as well. Call this north. south and in here I just simply want to add this to the beginning of the array and this to the end for each iteration and I can do this by using build array north south plug that in here and if I change this to eight lines We've got this. So each strand starts at 48, then does what it does and ends at 49. And now we can simply use these indices with get from array. So I'm getting these indices from my point position array. 
And I should now have a point position array that's ordered my strands as I need them. Um, or my point positions, so I can build the strands with the offset array. And if I look at these point positions, <clears throat> we've got this. So we said that we need, for the offset array, we need to start, basically need to provide the starting index for each strand. So in this case, it would be something like this. 0, 8, 16, 24, and so on. Increments of 8, because each strand here has eight points. So the easiest way to do this for this very particular case would be to simply create a sequence array, I think, and be done. And we could do that, but I want to show you a way that's a little more flexible for cases where maybe you have varying point counts per strand. <clears throat> so Let's see, the first thing I want to do is want to create a counts array. And what I mean by that is I want an array with as many elements as I've got strands. And the value or the data for each strand will be the point count for this strand. And the point count in this case is basically this number here plus two. So I'll increment that. by two and now i've just got to replicate this uh, value as many times as i've got strands i could use resize array but i've got the for each loop already so i'm just going to plug this in and send it straight to the output what that'll give me is this basically an array of eight eights. Okay, so this is simply creating the counts array. <clears throat> but now what we can do with this is we can turn this into an offset array. And so a very useful note for that is cumulative sum array. If I insert that, we get this. So that's almost done. We just have to add the zero in the beginning. So I'm going to create zero and use build array. Uh, like that. And now we have the offset array. And so this here we can turn this into a compound, call it, I don't know, counts to offset array. And then we could simply use this uh, or publish it and reuse it. And with that, we should actually be done. Hopefully it's all working. So let's just test it out. So I'm going to use construct strands, point position, offset array, plug that into the output, get rid of the sphere, and it looks pretty good. Give it a shape. Okay, it looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna give it a color. I've made a video on that a while ago. Random color. And now we should be able to change these parameters and see this update. So this should be the resolution of a strand. Probably can't go below three and it'll break, but I'm okay with that. And here we can just simply change the number of strands. So it looks like it's working pretty well. And the good thing is, because it's based on the indices of the uh, point positions, we can change the orientation here. And that should still work. So yeah, that's an introduction to construct strands. All right, thanks for watching.